What up, guys? It's Alan with Filmatic, and uh, we're going to just have a quick conversation about a couple things that we have going on. First two plugs I want to do real quick, and that's it, is go check out Fight Boy. It's on Tubi right now. It's a feature that I did that if you're not aware of, you should be. Second, I love Yerba. Uh, they're not promoting it, but maybe one day they will promote it. Now, if uh, you are pregnant and uh, breastfeeding, uh, or individuals sensitive to, to caffeine, don't drink this. It, they just recommend it, right? I don't think I'm pregnant. With that said, um, I wanna talk about a couple things real quick. Um, and things that people have been talking about for years. Uh, and it's funny because everything is so, like I, I was telling my brother, you know, I'm so old and I've been in this game for so long that um, I feel like things are just cyclical. Like they just keep happening. Um, I see that Brandon Washington, if you guys check out, have a red workshop that's coming up. Um, sign up, I think February 8th, they start dropping uh, tickets and stuff. Uh, and I remember like I met Brandon Washington at a red workshop I did. And I love how that idea of having like all the different cameras and stuff, which is what we did back then. I mean, we had like 10 different red cameras at the time and red still has so many freaking cameras that um yeah uh, it was such a it was just such a cool event that you could see that people were like were really enamored by it they loved it and uh, man I met a lot of really cool people through that and i'm so happy that someone with him with this platform with the community and um also the community that's around it's going to be coming and even captive studios which i worked with them all last year and really thankful for them for providing for my family that they're going to be doing a really cool thing so that everything feels like it's going in cyclicals and that was like you know it's just in cycles right um that happened almost oh, damn like eight years ago maybe uh, it's quite a bit of time what i really want to talk about today is more than anything this idea of creator versus filmmaker versus youtuber versus director of photography versus videography um and i'm just going to give you my brief definitions and what i always knew um so when i was coming up in the game i knew that i was studying tv and broadcast so i was going to be put into the category of tv um and even at that time um, I knew, I kind of knew that web was going to be the future, you know? Um, and I knew that back then that there was like this whole idea of like, uh, man, what is this new media for? And I remember one of my, my old boss from uh, college when I was in a work study, he would come in and I'd be on YouTube. And this is like the beginning of YouTube. This is pre, this is when they were still using Macromedia Flash and all that stuff. If y'all never heard of that, I'm sorry, I'm so freaking old. Uh, but I, this is really more for you guys to get an education of like what's happening right now. It's already happened like many times and it's going to happen again later. Right. Um, so he would come in and be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, I'm researching. Right. Like, and, you know, always saying that I was researching, just watching YouTube videos. And back then mainly it was just cat videos and all kinds of uh, other funny stuff like uh, uh, the uh, global warming ninja. Ask it into dot com special delivery. Global warming. I, know I don't know if you remember that guy. Uh, I, I just remember you know, how those things started crossing paths back then. And we're at the cusp of having a mini DV 720p uh, tape. <laughs> this is still uh, technically digital, but using analog style things where um, we're barely like transferring completely analog to digital. So I never got to mess with film, like actual film, right? And what happens is that as I left TV and broadcast, and I understood a lot of the things that come with it, which is why I understand like, uh, red SDI protocol, like those protocols have been in place for forever if you come from that background. When I was coming up, uh, I knew like, damn, I really hate TV. And even t the TV world today has meshed over to, to cinema. Like they're doing episodic uh, content, but dude, all this stuff could easily be playing in theater, right? Breaking Bad, like for me, was one of the, my biggest introductions into episodic looking like film and feeling like it was a new world. Um, so you would go to the cinema to watch Lord of the Rings, to watch the cool new CG, the new VFX, the, all the crazy stuff that was, uh, that people were spending millions of dollars on working for two, three years. And now we have this new platform that people are creating insane stuff. Like, you know, Christopher Nolan does, um, all, all this, uh, amazing stuff. And then you have YouTubers, uh, or, you know, YouTubers like create everything that he just did. Like two weeks after it drops or a week after it drops, they go in and start messing around with paint and all kinds of stuff. And uh, they're kind of mimicking what Christopher Nolan did. And you're like, dude, they just spent all these millions of dollars or the creator, right? Um, where you're kind of seeing the emergence of, of, of YouTube and of film kind of mi mixing in. I can almost imagine the corridor digital guys like 
um, you know, doing all the VFX for that. Or even back in the day when we were learning um, from, uh, you know, how to do VFX or how to do After Effects and then knowing that the guy that we're going with, if you remember Video Copilot, um, him upgrading and now doing, actually doing all the Star Wars stuff. And you're just like, what? Like mind blown, you know? Um, so I, I, I know that's a long rant, but you know, it kind of tells you like what's happening in, in our mind. When I started out, I was doing wedding films. Um, I was shooting, uh, you know, cinematic <laughs> wedding films. And what happened there was that, you know, I was shooting films in 24 frames. They were more like highlights. They looked like music videos. Uh, this back when, um, you know, people were paying $2,000, $3,000 for like a two minute highlight reel of their wedding, which to me was awesome. It's, you know, it's easy to do. You know, everyone's already in makeup. Everyone already looks fine. Everyone's dressed their best. They're picking a great location. I mean, uh, you know, it's easy for you to shoot anywhere. And most of the, most of the stuff, if you're in, focus and if you understand angles you will get a good shot um and that was me that like I, you know trial through fire going into wedding films and shooting that stuff but at the same time as I, was, as I was doing that i was filming uh i was doing short films i was um um trying to use a red every time i could um shooting a short with my brother for the 48 hour film festivals um i mean i was just doing as much as i could and my whole process was as soon as my production goes like starts covering almost everything for my weddings that my weddings are bringing in then i kill the wedding company and like i'm done and a bunch of other crazy stuff happened that made me close the wedding company a lot earlier um and you know i i, I can still be angry about that stuff but honestly it's just things that you gotta move on and you gotta you, you gotta um slowly just like focus on like like what you're trying to do and by doing that um i was able to to, to be reached out to by uh, several companies who said hey man would you like to shoot this netflix piece or you'd like to shoot that so i actually got to shoot a netflix um a, a special for one of my friends shingle bling um and that got to go up and uh for a long time i was one of the guys that had produced that and not just that but we got to help produce when uh, the tig Notaro special came afterwards and because i'm not union and all that stuff i, I only get to like get con con consultation or cam op fees or um, fees to like that I just helped out, but I get paid uh, quite a bit of money, right? I'm, I was moving from like a wedding filmmaker to like cinematographer, which is pretty much what I always wanted to do. And um, damn, it's loud, crazy. So I go from being a wedding filmmaker at the same time, trying to be a cinematographer, trying to be a, um, you know, a director uh, and, and all that stuff. So I'm over here creating um, pieces. And um, these pieces, even in their own right today, still look pretty good. Like if you would create something like that, or if I would create something like I did back then, I would still be pretty happy with it. And that's because I was always focusing on making things that look, that don't look like they're locked into this time frame. And uh, that kind of stuff helped me to, you know, just kind of excel and, and, and launch my career. I would go to places like NAB, this, this is before there was like influencers and before that, you know, just having my little, you know, uh, 3,000 to uh, 4,000 followers back then was like a big deal for some of them. Uh, some of those companies would give me bags and be like, what the, What do you want to give me a bag for? Like the whole influencing thing didn't even come into my brain, like at all. Like I didn't, I didn't even get it. Um, even back then, back in the day with my YouTube, I had one video that did 66,000 views. This was 15 years ago. And it was me playing guitar and I didn't play that great of guitar. All the comments when they had added them, you can see they talked a lot of smack. But the company that made the pedal hit me up directly and they're like, hey man, you should you should check out the new one that we have. And I was like, dude, why are you even talking to me, an 18 year old? Dude, that's creepy, like get away from me, you know? I don't think I was 18. Like the whole mindset of like doing brand deals and all that, like none of that stuff was heard of on YouTube at the time. So I, I couldn't even like envision that happening, right? Um, you know, at that point I could have jumped over to being a YouTuber and all that. And that's, I, I kind of tell people at this, point that you know you could have like uh, when people come in and they're like hey man have you heard of bitcoin like by the time you hear about bitcoin like it's too late like you should have already you should have already been in it right and uh the same thing with youtubing like us as filmmakers and videographers and all the other cinematographers like if we wanted to have a massive youtube presence we should have jumped in to it 10 years ago now you can still do it now and build your niche your niche and and build up your own um like your group and your people but ultimately like um, I, I call it that a young man's game, right? And, or someone uh, that's consistent, someone that can be pus posting up all, all together. So if you finally get to this point, I know there's quite a bit of talking. 
and that's because I just, uh, dude, I'm jamming this freaking yerba, bro. It's crazy. You know, if you're a creator, uh, creator for me is a fluff term. It's 100% a fluff term. It's it's very ambiguous. It's kind of like the word cinematic. Like you understand what, you understand that you're saying that it alludes to cinema in some way, but you don't know how to explain that. You don't know like what makes Quentin Tarantino's uh, Pulp Fiction cinematic versus, you know, The Revenant cinematic. Like they're both cinematic in their own right, but their, comp their contrast ratios, design, style of shooting, um, even direction and motive for, for for characters is completely different. And, uh, but they're both cinematic in their own right. So a cinematic, the term itself is such a fluff word that I make fun of it all the time, right? I say, man, this hat is so cinematic. Um, even right now, the fluff term of like saying things that look like A24, like, come on, bro. Like not every A24 film looks the same. Um, they all feel the same, which is a vibe in itself, but the look can change depending on the cinematographer or the design of it. If you're a creator, like I get it, but it's such a blanket term that people are only going to make fun of it because yeah, I mean, everyone's a creator, right? Like if I sit down and I write, well, I'm, I'm a creator, I'm creating, you know, I'm a writer, but I, I'm also creating or developing something, right? And so, you know, if you're being made fun of because that term, well, that's just mainly because you're in, it's too broad, you know? So start narrowing it down. And that's what I did. You know, I was a wedding filmmaker um, at the time, but I didn't even like to be known as a wedding filmmaker, which is why I didn't name my wedding company like my my own name. I was like, weddings are just an avenue for me to get to where I want to be. And that's it, you know, uh, coming from like my background where we didn't have a ton of money, we didn't have a ton of gear, we didn't have all that stuff. Weddings are the perfect place for you to move on. So cinematography was always where I wanted to go, which is a specialty. You know, cinematography is a specialty within videography, within filmmaking. You know, you're the person that's in charge of the design and the look of the film. Like you're creating the ratios, you're creating all these things, all by the, in the guidance of the director. And sometimes you're guiding the director depending on where they're at. So cinemat cinematographer would, or director of photography would be a specialty. Videography kind of, encompasses everything. I mean, you're shooting in 24 frames and 30 frames and 60 frames. You're shooting high school reels. You're shooting TV ads. You're shooting, sometimes you might be shooting a commercial and you're, or you might be shooting um, a, a movie too, you know? Um, I've met a lot of videographers that ended up shooting TV and at that time they're shooting in 30 frames a second. Like this was the thing back in the day. Now that would be considered like a YouTube short or a YouTube thing. So I feel that YouTube, the YouTubers kind of merged into video and YouTuber took over the videographer term. Videographers being called uh, uh, videographers, uh, we make fun of that because it's one of those things like if you're a, you know, when they say like, oh, jack of all trades, master of none, that's kind of what we think of as for videographers. Now, we're not saying that you suck at, at what you do. Now, we're saying that you're pretty good at everything. Like you can probably like hang with the best of the best because you know, everything. And I think that's what's so powerful about videography. That's what's powerful about YouTubers, um, uh, creators. Um, the same thing about, uh, you know, all them is that they all have like this whole utilitarian type of view where they can go and they can, um, they'll know how to fix sound. They'll know how to edit. They'll know how to, to light a, a scene or light an interview. They'll know how to do all those things where when you're calling a cinematographer, you're saying, Hey, I want you to look at this whole project. You're, I want you to design what this is going to feel like. I want you, I want you to design every element from beginning to, to end. It's really easy to go into a project and make every frame look good. It's super hard to make every frame to look consistent across different days, different nights, different locations, different people. I mean, it's just, it, it, it takes a lot more time and effort and thought. And that's where the cinematography kind of comes into play. Um, and that's really what I like, like really more than anything, I, I love designing stuff. And, um, you know, I would just tell you that if, you know, when I was starting up, people would tell me you're not a cinematographer because you make, you do wedding films. And that's why I say the things are kind of like, they just kind of go around and around and around. So people now are like, you know, Hey, you're, you're a creator. You're not a cinematographer. You're not like, bro. Like, I really don't care about any of that. I just think that, you should learn what they're saying and what they mean so that you can define what you want to be. And by doing that, like 
all you're going to do is have more power in terms of like what you're trying to create, what you're trying to do. And hopefully that sends you down the right rabbit hole to create something special. Um, and most importantly, like the reason why I've always loved just filming in general is because people literally are giving me a little bit of their lifetime to hear or listen to or watch something that I've created. And I think that's the most important and most endearing thing you could do to somebody that you may never ever meet in person, you know, uh, go watch their stuff, go check it out. So, um, like I said, that's my plug again for fight boy, go check that out because, um, that story in itself, it's such a fun story. It's a comedy. There is cussing in it, but, um, overall the story elements are, are pretty good. And for something that was done for such a small budget, it kind of entails like, you know, there's a reason why it was designed that way. We shot certain lenses so that it felt like an old school movie. It feels like a movie you watched back in the day. Um, and, uh, you know, so I was more, I wasn't too worried about what camera I was going to use and what lenses. And I was more worried about like the intent and the, and the feel and the design and, and how, when people see it, it'll feel nostalgic in some way. So I, I hope this helps, man. If you're like, just kind of lost and you're like, damn, like people keep calling me YouTuber or creator. Or, like how come I can't be a filmmaker or whatever? Like, bro, like honestly, you can do whatever you want. Um, take whatever term you want, use it. Um, and, uh, you know, just create, man. Like, yeah, go, go be a creator or, or whatever, man. Like, um, but if you're going to jump into specialty and video, then look into those specialties. Like I want to be a, a sound guy, or I want to be a colorist, or I want to be a, this, like those places, they take a lot of time to get there. But once you're there, like there's a reason why some of these people have like master technician titles. And that's what, um, the cinematographer title is. And that's what, you know, a colorist, a senior colorist, you know, those things like you're just moving up the ladder and I'm not a master cinematographer by any means. Like I'm not there, but I hope that my stuff keeps just elevating and being created. Um, I, I hope that I can just keep elevating and creating more content. Um, whether that's in film and documentary and YouTube, even this, you know, and, uh, you know, so I just want to reach out to you and, uh, yeah, if you have those problems, like hit me up, love to talk to you about it. And, uh, yeah, if you're feeling kind of lost, check this out. Hopefully you understand like, dude, this happens. It's cyclical. Like things keep happening all the time in a couple more years, there's going to be 20 new red cameras and we'll have another red workshop. Um, or you can just jump into Ari, uh, which is what I'm shooting with right now. Uh, Ari with a Canon, uh, Sumir lens. This is a 25 and man, it's freaking crazy wide, right? All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for checking this out. We'll be talking soon and, uh, hopefully you can check out that workshop. All right. Take care guys. Peace.